Joining me now is Ukraine's Minister of Culture and Information Policy, Oleksandr Kachenko. Sir, good to see you in real life. You and I talked in Finally. the first days of the war when you were in a car. You, were, you and your, your colleagues in the government were uh, figuring out what to do next. And you said to me then, they will never take Kyiv. And here we are standing on St. Michael's Square. I was right. You were right, in fact. We were just talking about the history of this, uh, this remarkable church. The audience gets to hear these bells ringing. But it is part of the story that you are telling, that you haven't been able to tell all that much during the last year because of the war, about the fact that this country has a rich and distinct culture. Yeah, I was standing in between two uh, great cathedrals. One cathedral is behind you, St. Sophia of 11th century. And this one, um, uh, St. Mikhail uh, Cathedral, was ruined, by the way, by Bolsheviks in the 30s and was fully rebuilt. But this is great square which shows uh, uh, how rich is Ukrainian history, which uh, Russian, as they are doing right now, they are robbing uh, artifacts from museums, so they steal also our history, because ancient Kiev started from here, the place where we are staying ra and right now, and Russians were all time trying to take uh, on their behalf the rich history of Ukraine. But going back to the 30s, this has been a struggle for Ukrainians. They have always felt that association with Russia is meant to diminish their, their, their cultural heritage. And, and Vladimir Putin said it on the night he declared the special military operation, that, that it's not a place of, of culture and history. Uh, they are denying our identity and the main uh, presence of identity, I mean, the main representation is, of course, culture heritage sites, our history, language, uh, literature, whatever, music. And denying of identity mean denying of Ukraine and denying, of course, culture heritage sites. Uh, they damaged or ruined completely more than 500 historical and architectural uh, sites during this war. Some of them, they were targeted specifically, like uh, uh, Museum of Grigory Skavrada in Kharkiv region or Ivankiv Museum of Maria Primachenka in uh, Kiev region. And this is done uh, by purpose, the same thing they are doing, trying to rob our uh, artifacts. But what is important to mention is that we probably have uh, the biggest uh, stealing of artifacts since the Second World War, but at the same time the biggest evacuation of artifacts. Hundreds of thousands of objects were evacuated during the war because we are caring about uh, culture heritage. And by the way, I'm very thankful to the United States uh, Department, which announced recently this week a seven million dollar assistance specifically to preserve Ukrainian culture heritage. One of the things we talked about yesterday uh, with um, with Mr. Kirkov, the author, is the degree to which uh, in, in the occupied parts of Ukraine, occupied by Russia, they're even banning books and, and stories about Ukraine's history and culture, particularly books that are about recent struggles with Russia, but even those that go back to the 30s. I have been in uh, liberated Balaklia in Kharkiv region, and by my own eyes uh, saw how, what they were doing, not only with Ukrainian historical books, but all books in Ukrainian language. They were trying wow. to move it out from libraries, even Stephen King book, which I so by my own eyes. So uh, the issue is that, uh, and in schools, they were trying to impose so-called uh, lessons about Russian history. So uh, how they want it to be. And uh, the whole purpose of putting uh, war is uh, simply to say that next day they can deny uh, any other nation, because this is uh, the face of aggression. What about the Ukrainian language? When you go further to the east and the south, there are a lot of Ukrainians whose day-to-day -day life involves speaking Russian. There are a lot of kids uh, who, uh, you know, have, have changed to speaking Ukrainian uh, as, a, as a language in their house and at school. But the Russian language is, is, has a lot of presence in the east of this country with Ukrainians. Of course, uh, but um, habits and behavior of Ukrainians, especially during this war, changed completely. Many people who are speaking, even in Kyiv, uh, Russian language in day-to-day -day life, uh, change themselves. Nobody tells them told them that they need to change and turn to Ukrainian because culture and language is a sort of defense shield for us too. And I think that this uh, 
uh, tradition or this trend will continue. And uh, for example, uh, my uh, smallest kid, we started with my wife speaking with him at home, Ukrainian, since 2015 when he was born. And uh, definitely he can speak Russian when he returned back to it at home, but, but he speaks with Ukrainian accent. He, can, uh, he definitely knows English right now. And we have a program within the government how to make instead of Russia as a second language, English. The second Tell me about what happens after this war with those people who uh, either claim some Russian heritage or are more comfortable in Russian. How do you make sure this doesn't happen to them, that they don't end up being sort of second class citizens if they are more comfortable in Russian or they claim? Because there are people in this country who have one parent who is Russian and one parent is Ukrainian or claim, you know, were born in Russia or his families are in Russia. How will you make sure that you don't do to the Russians what the Russians have done to the Ukrainians? As soon as they identify themselves Ukrainians, are sharing values, democratic values, respect Ukrainian culture, I see no problem. Uh, you, you pointed out, we've been showing pictures of St. Michael's, which is in front of us, but St. Sophia over there, this was not destroyed no. in the 1930s. This is over a thousand years old, this, this yeah. thing that is behind us. Yeah, and there is uh, uh, tradition to say in St. Sophia you can see uh, a mosaics of Byzantine style with St. Oranta stains, a Virgin Maria. And uh, the rumor says that until Oranta stays, Kiev stay. Wow. Uh, good to see you in person, sir. Thank you, and thanks for being right in your prediction that they will not take Kiev. My pleasure. Good to see you.